A circle with integer radius r is centered at r r. Different line segments of length c i connect points 0 a i to b i 0, for 1 is less than or equal to i is less than or equal to 14, and are tangent to the circle, where a i, b i, and c i are all positive integers, and c1 through c14 are in increasing or at least non-decreasing order. We have a circle of integer radius r, which is centered at r r, and is tangent to both the x and y axes as shown here. Now we also have different line segments of length c i, which connect points 0 a i on the y axis. I'll just write 0 a for the general case. The line segments of length c connect that point to b 0 on the x axis, where a, b, and c are all positive integers. c could also be tangent on the other side of the circle, like this, where that c's a and b would also be positive integers. We want to find the least possible value of r that allows at least 14 line segments to be drawn in such a way that a, b, and c are all positive integers, and we want to find the ratio of the largest value of c, in that case, to the smallest value. In the case where the line segment with length c is tangent below the circle of radius r centered at r r, let the triangle be a, b, c with vertex a opposite side a, b opposite side little b, and c at the origin here. Then we can use reference triangle ABC, where the circle with radius R is an X circle. And we know how to find the radius of a C X circle of any triangle. You should know this if you've read EGMO. It's just the area K over S minus C equals RC. In this case, R equals the area, which is half the product of the right triangle's legs. And that's AB over 2 divided by a plus b plus c over 2 minus c. Now let's multiply both numerator and denominator by 2. We get ab over a plus b plus c minus 2c, which is just a plus b minus c. And c in this case is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. So r equals ab over a plus b minus the square root of a squared plus b squared, so in this case, we have r times a plus b minus the square root of a squared plus b squared equals ab. And so ar plus br minus the square root of a squared plus b squared times r equals ab. Now, if we want to get the square root on the other side, we have to subtract ab. And if we do that, we have AR plus BR minus the square root of A squared plus B squared times R minus AB equals zero. Now move R times the square root of A squared plus B squared onto the other side. We get AR plus BR minus AB equals R times the square root of A squared plus B squared. Now we divide by R. We get A plus B minus AB over R equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. And now if we can get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. Assuming the left side is positive, of course. So A plus B minus AB over R times A plus B minus AB over R equals A squared plus B squared. So let's multiply it out. We have a squared plus AB minus A squared B over R plus AB plus B squared minus AB squared over R minus A squared B over R minus AB squared over R and then plus a squared b squared over r squared. And all of that is equal to a squared plus b squared. The good news is we can cancel the a squared plus b squared from both the left and the right. So we have 0 equals 2ab minus how many a squared b over r's are there? There's 2, this one and this one. And there's also 2ab squared over r's. 
And then there's one a squared, b squared over r squared. And now we can cancel out a factor of a, b. We can divide by a, b because it's not zero. We have zero equals two minus two a over r minus two b over r plus a b over r squared. And now if we multiply everything by r squared, we get zero equals a b minus two r a minus two r b plus two r squared. And notice that this looks very similar to the expansion of a minus 2r times b minus 2r, except that would give us a 4r squared here. So we can write 2r squared equals a minus 2r times b minus 2r, since that would give us on the left side 2r squared, all this plus a 4r squared at the end, instead of a 2r squared. And that's exactly what a minus 2r times b minus 2r is. So it looks like we have the simple equation 2r squared equals a minus 2r times b minus 2r, and that's if the circle is an x circle. Now we have to consider the case where the circle with radius r centered at r r is the in circle of triangle ABC. Then we have that the in circle of any triangle, the in radius, is given by the area over the semi perimeter, which in this case is given by ab over 2, the area of triangle ABC divided by a plus b plus c over 2, which is just ab over a plus b plus c, and that's equal to ab over a plus b plus the square root of a squared plus b squared. This has to equal r, the in radius of triangle abc, if we're considering this case, where c is tangent above the circle instead of below. So we have r a plus rb plus r times the square root of a squared plus b squared equals ab. And so now we can subtract ra plus rb, which gives us ab minus ra minus rb equals r times the square root of a squared plus b squared. And so this gives us ab over r minus a plus b, if we divide by r, this is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. And now we can square this, assuming the left side is non-negative, of course. And then we would get the same thing as we did before. a b over r minus a plus b squared equals a squared plus b squared. But the solutions to our previous equation and the solutions to this equation are the same. This just takes the negative of what the other did for the square root. Given that a plus b minus ab over r could be either positive or negative, the solutions to that equation plus the solutions to this equation are just all the solutions to this ab over r minus a plus b squared equals a squared plus b squared, which we simplified earlier to just a minus 2r times b minus 2r equals 2r squared. So it's now left to just solve that equation. Suppose we have an ordered pair of integers x, y that satisfies x times y equals 2r squared. Then all you're doing with the ordered pair x, y to get a, b is just a simple transformation a, b equals x plus 2r and y plus 2r. So you can simply add 2r to each of x and y to get a and b respectively. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between the ordered pairs a, b, and the ordered pairs x, y, such that x times y equals 2r squared. And the number of ordered pairs of integers x, y, such that x times y equals 2r squared, well, if both x and y were positive, it would simply be the number of positive integer divisors of 2r squared, because x can be any one of those, and each would uniquely determine y, because y equals 2r squared over x, and each different value of x would lead to a different value of y. So if we want 14 solutions, we need at least 7 positive solutions in positive integers to x times y equals 2r squared. And so 2r squared should have at least 7 positive integer divisors. That is our target value of r, the least positive integer r, 
such that 2r squared has at least seven positive integer divisors. Let's check for each value of r starting at one. So we have r here, 2r squared, and the number of positive integer divisors denoted by tau of 2r squared here. So we do one first, 2r squared is equal to two, and then the number of positive integer divisors of two is just two, one and two. So we have two there. If r is two, then 2r squared is two times four, which is eight, and that has four divisors, one, two, four, and eight. If r is three, then 2r squared is 18, and that has six, one, two, three, six, nine, 18. If r is equal to four, then 2r squared is two times 16, which is 32. And that has two to the fifth, so six positive integer divisors. If r is five, two times 25 is 50. And that's equal to two times five squared. So one plus one times two plus one is two times three, which is also six. But if r equals six, then 2r squared is 72, which is 8 times 9. So 2 cubed times 3 squared, 3 plus 1 times 2 plus 1 is 4 times 3. That's 12, the first time we got a number that's greater than 7. So r should be equal to 6. So we know r equals 6. We can write a minus 2 times 6, which is 12, times b minus 12 equals 2 times 6 squared, which is 72. So we want to add 12 to each x and y of all the x and y that satisfy x times y equals 72. For example, if we have 8 and 9, then a would be 20 and b equals 21. And we want to maximize and minimize the value of c, which is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. The least possible value of c will occur when a minus 12 and b minus 12 are negative and the triangle x circle is the circle of radius r centered at r r. When a minus 12 and b minus 12 are negative, it's an x circle. If they're positive, it's an n circle. So we need them to be as close together as possible and negative if we want the least possible value of c intuitively. And that occurs when a minus 12 is equal to negative 8 and b minus 12 equals negative 9 in some order. So that a equals 4 and b equals 3 giving c equals 5. Now, if we want to maximize the value of c, then we need to maximize the value of 1 of a or b. And that occurs when 1 of a minus 12 or b minus 12 is equal to 72 itself. They have to both be integers. So the best we can do is let one of the factors be 72 itself. So the other factor can be 1, and we maximize 1 of a or b. So we have a minus 12 equals 72, and b minus 12 equals 1. So a equals 84, and b equals 13. What is c equal to in this case? Well, it's the square root of 84 squared plus 13 squared, which is 169. That's just the square root of 84 squared plus 2 times 84 plus 1, which is equal to the square root of 84 plus 1 squared, and that's equal to 85. So C equals 85 in this case. We want the ratio C14 over C1 for the least possible value of R, which is 6. The ratio C14 over C1, C14 is the largest possible value of C, and C1 is the least possible value of C. So we have 85 over 5, and that's equal to E, 17. Thank you for watching my YouTube video, and please follow my channel if you would like to see more videos.